son. Now here, Jesus is saying, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father that is God except through me. That means that there is no other way to God except through Jesus Christ. There is no other way to eternity except through Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what religion it may be. It doesn't matter what, what, what faith it may be. If it is not a relationship with Jesus Christ, as in the Bible, it leads to destruction. The only way to salvation in this world is through Jesus Christ. And that's why Acts 4.12 tells us, Acts 4.12 tells us, what does it say to us? Acts 4.12 says, it says here, it says that salvation is found in no one else. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So it doesn't matter what the religion is. It doesn't matter what the way is. The Bible is telling us very clearly is that here is that salvation is found in no one else except through Jesus Christ. For there is no other name under heaven. That means there is no other name in the whole of creation given to mankind by which we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. And John, 1 John 5.12, the last verse here tells us, um, it says here, whoever has the Son, again, has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. <clears throat> so the difference between a soul ending up in heaven or ending up in hell, which are realities, is whether or not that soul has been made right with God through Jesus Christ. It's whether or not that person has repented of their sins and turn from their lifestyle of sin and rebellion against God. It's whether or not they have trusted in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Really trusted. Really followed. Not just with our, not just with our mouths, but with our hearts. And it's whether or not they have submitted to the Lordship of Jesus. And given their lives to Jesus. So the point is this. Where we end up in eternity has nothing to do. Listen very carefully. Where we end up in eternity has nothing to do with whether or not we are good people. You can be the nicest person on earth, the kindest person on earth. You can be charitable, feed the poor, help others. You can have integrity, you can be honest. But that means nothing. All these things are good. God, God commands us as his children to live that way. But all those things, being a good person, being charitable, being kind, all those things mean nothing without Jesus Christ. You can feed the poor from now, every day of the week till next year. Without Jesus, if Jesus is not the motivation and the heart and the reason behind what you do, it means nothing. You can be a good person, you can be neighborly, you can be kind. If Jesus Christ is not the reason behind what you do, it means nothing. The motivation behind what we do in life and why we do it in life must be centered on one person only, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. So, the word of God is very clear, as we begin to round up very slowly. Through Jesus Christ alone we are saved. That's why it says in Acts 4, 12, that salvation is found in no one else, except in Christ. And that's why Christ says, he says I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to God except through me. Christ is the way. Any other way aside from Christ is going to get people lost. Christ is the truth. Any other way outside of Christ is going to lead them to lies and deception. And Christ is the source of eternal life. He leads to eternal life. Any other way is going to lead to what? Eternal death and separation from God. So it is through Christ alone we are saved, number one. Number two, there is no other way to God except through him. Number three, there is no other name, no other way, no other source by which we are saved except through him. And he alone is the way, the truth, and the life. So the singular factor between whether a soul ends up in heaven, like Lazarus, or in hell, like the rich man, is Christ. And whether or not they be made right with God and submitted to him as Lord and Savior. So as we begin to round up and close, here's the thing. 
whether we choose to believe it or not, whether it makes us uncomfortable or not, whether we have other views about it or not, whether we believe God does not exist, whether we are atheists, a different religion, a different faith or not, Heaven and hell are realities, as said by the word of God. If God said it in his word, we better believe him. If Jesus says it in his word, we better believe him. The question is, what do we do about that? Because many will stand on that day and say, but Lord, I didn't know. But you were told. You were told, we were told. It was here in his word. So the question is that, what do we do about it? Heaven and hell are realities. And again, I'm saying it, God doesn't say these things to frighten us, but to warn us, to bring us back to him. The Bible says that it's not God's desire that anybody perish. It's very clear in the word of God. It's not his desire that anybody perish, but that all will come to salvation through Christ. He even says in his word that if the wicked turn from their ways and their righteous in their thoughts, that what he will take them back. That's God's word. So it doesn't matter what we believe or how we feel about it, heaven and hell are realities. And sooner or later, we all find out. The second thing that we have to understand is that missing one and ending up in the other will have serious, permanent, and everlasting consequences for that person's soul. It cannot be reversed. It cannot be changed. No amount of crying or begging is going to change it. It will have serious irreversible consequences. And the consequences are so serious that the word of God repeatedly warns us. The God keeps warning us in his word. He keeps telling us in his word to avoid hell and to seek heaven. If you look at Matthew 7, 13 to 14, Matthew 7, 13 to 14, listen what it says. It says here, it says, enter through the narrow gate. Enter through the narrow gate. The narrow gate. This is Jesus speaking again. And when he speaks, we need to pay attention. He says, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And he says here, and many enter through it. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But he says here, it says, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. The Lord Jesus is warning us and telling us, enter through the narrow gate. That narrow gate is Jesus Christ. That narrow way is Jesus Christ. He's telling us. In fact, in the Bible, it says, make every effort. He says, make every effort, do everything in your power to enter through the narrow gate. He said that, make every effort, not some effort. He says, make every effort to enter through that narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. Not some, many. But he says here, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. Only a few find it. So every human being has two options. We have two roads. All of us. Whether we like it or not, whether we believe it or not, we have two roads. We have the narrow road, which is Jesus. We have the broad road, which is destruction, which is hell, which is Satan. Every human being, whether we realize it or not, we are walking <clears throat> on one of these roads. The narrow road or the broad road. And Jesus is telling us that the only road that we must be on the only road that we must follow, the only road that leads to eternal life is his road, the narrow road, the narrow gate. Because that is the only road that leads to life. 
Any other road outside of that is the broad road that leads to destruction. And he's saying that many are on it. And the Bible tells us repeatedly, it says that we must what? Make every effort. Make every effort to enter that narrow road. Just to try and close and round up, Lazarus suffered while he was alive. He went through the challenges. He was poor. He was a beggar. He had sores on his body. He had scraps. The dog came and licked his sores. But at the end of the day, the suffering stopped. And when he died, he found himself in the presence of the Lord for all eternity. The rich man was thinking about the things of this life, the things of this world, he was enjoying himself. He probably thought he had a long time to keep enjoying himself. He never saw death coming. And the Bible says one day he died. He died. And when he died, what? He opened his eyes. And he found himself separated from the presence of God for all eternity. The rich man was on the broad road to destruction. He was on the broad road enjoying himself. And what happened? It led to destruction. A few key things. It is Jesus telling us these things stories. When Jesus speaks, we need to pay attention. He's not just speaking theory. He's speaking truth. And he's sharing this with us. I'm saying it again because what? He loves us. If you're on a road and there's a big ditch at the end of that road, a big hole, a massive hole, and there are no warning signs and you're driving at night, and you fall into that hole. Then because there's no warning signs, whoever is responsible has not been good to you. They have not been kind to you. They've done you wrong. But as you're driving at night and there's a ditch at the end of the road, there's a big hole at the end of the road, and you have warning signs telling you along the way, you know how to avoid that ditch and to save yourself. And the person who's done that, they've done that because they care about you. But you can't see the warning signs along the way there's a, there's, in terms of there's a ditch at the end of the road and still drive fast and still fall in that ditch. When we fall in that ditch, that is not any other person's fault except our own. We made the choice. We made that decision. So God shares his word with us. Because he loves us. The Bible says God is love. God is love. And he showed us that love by giving his son for us. To die for us. He gave what was most important to him for us. We were his enemies. The Bible says while we were still enemies, Christ, what was the enemies of God, Christ died for us. So God doesn't have to prove anything anymore. God is love. He loves us dearly and he is speaking to every soul to say, come back to me. Repent. Come back to me. Because time is short. And he sent his son to the world to save us. Jesus came to the world to reveal the character and the nature of God to us. Christ came to save us from our sin so that we can live glorious lives, righteous lives before God. He came into the world to take our, judge, our judgment upon himself, and to give us eternal life. But 1 John 5, 12 is clear. I'm saying it again. Whoever has the Son has life. But whoever does not have the Son does not have life. We're going to end there for this morning. Thank you so much for joining us and being with us. And um, we'll carry on next week. Next week we're going to talk about... Um, why people ignore something as important as eternity um, and also what we can do so that we don't fall into the same trap. We're also going to talk next week about how we can draw closer to Christ and live in a way that we have assurance of where we're going to go when we leave this world.
is just closing prayer.